In here we will try to solve a numerical problem that involves heat capacities of liquids and gases and heats of vaporization so that we know when we can apply one equation and, and another. That's a very important distinction. First of all, let's start uh, drawing a cooling curve or a heating curve for, in this case, it talks about liquid ammonia that tells you the boiling point and it's asking for um, how much energy how much energy is needed to heat to heat up 25 grams of ammonia from this temperature to this temperature. So we have to heat up ammonia. Uh, so it's important to first keep in mind what is it that we're doing. Notice, uh, let's, let's start drawing a heating curve, just being kind of generous here. What am I doing? Well, this is the temperature and this is the heat, in this case, being given. And these heat curves, if you can see, there are different areas in here. When you have a curve, well, sorry, when you have a, a slope, when the temperature changes, when you give heat, it means that you have a heat capacity. Okay, so remember, when you have a relationship, a slope between heat between heat and temperature, it means that you have a pure phase. So this is solid, this is liquid, this is gas. It should make sense because as you warm up your substance, you will have, uh, you'll go from solid to liquid to gas. Okay, uh, this that is constant is the solid to liquid phase change, and in this other form, in this other plateau, is the liquid to gas phase change. And what would be this temperature? Well, this temperature is when your solid melts. So this will be the melting point. This is the melting point when your solid becomes liquid. And, and this is your boiling point. Okay. So again, it's very important to understand the different areas because notice that during the phase change, the heat that you provide is not if you will, invested in increasing the temperature is invested in breaking the bonds. So your solid becoming liquid will not increase its temperature until all the solid has become liquid. And that's an important distinction. When you have a pure liquid, now all the bonds have been broken from the solid, therefore the heat is being invested in increasing the temperature. Okay, so notice you can only apply this equation when you have either pure solid, pure liquid, or pure gas. Uh, in this case, for ammonia, it tells us that the boiling point is minus 33. So this would be minus 33.4. Okay, And we go from minus 65 to minus 12. So we go from minus 65 to, let me remove this, to minus 12. Okay, this is still the temperature in Celsius. Okay, so in other words, we will leave here and we will get here. So to calculate the energy for going from say 0.1 to 0.2, you will need to split the problem in three parts. The first part will be for heating up the liquid. Okay, so it'll be when going from 65 degrees until negative 33.4. The second step will be the phase change liquid to gas at negative 3.4 Celsius. Okay. And the third step will be going from negative 33.4 to the negative 12.0 Celsius. Okay, so you have to calculate the heat associated for each of these three processes because you cannot, you, there isn't a single formula going from from the liquid to gas because there isn't a single heat capacity, etc. All right, so how do we figure out point one? Well, this is pure liquid, so the heat necessary is. Uh, let's see, it's given, it's giving us the specific heat capacity of the liquid, okay, so notice we are in liquid, so we have to use that number, 4.7 joules over grams and Kelvin times the mass of 
the ammonia you have 25 grams notice I can use grams here because they will cancel out with this one and the change in temperature the final is negative 33.4 negative negative 65 okay so yes this will be positive the heat is positive does it make sense that the heat is positive yes because it's supposed to be endothermic we are warming up a liquid okay this will be your Q1 if you will the heat one how do we calculate the heat involved in vaporizing 25 grams of ammonia well we know that the heat of vaporization is this we have 25 grams we know that 17 grams is the, the, the molecular weight of ammonia there is one mole of ammonia and we know that in one mole you have 23.5 kilojoules careful here this Q1 was in joules therefore we need to make sure that all the heats are in the same unit so we know that one kilojoules is 10 to the 3 joules and again this will be positive and this will be our Q2 okay that's a number and finally when going from negative 33 to negative 12 this will be a very similar process as Q1 just that we will be using a different heat capacity in this case Q3 is the heat capacity of the gas now we have gas and that's 2.2 joules over gram and Kelvin times the 25 grams the 25 grams of ammonia have not gone anywhere they're still there so, even though they are vapor now but and the temperature change final minus initial minus minus plus 33.4 Okay, again, notice that this is positive, and this is what we call Q3 is positive. So overall, all of the heat involved in this process will be as when we add up Q1, Q2, and Q3. That's a very stereotypical problem, but I think it emphasizes the need to use different uh, specific heat capacities depending on the phase and using different formulas depending on what uh, part of the or the cool of the cooling graph or the the heating graph